to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Greg Enterline. We're here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and thank you for coming to join us at worship today. We have a couple of announcements before we begin service, and we'll start with the least important one, and that's that uh, I think we all can agree on the most important draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals was the seventh round pick, Purdue Boilermaker Marcus Bailey, who's now a Cincinnati Bengal. Uh, had to get that in there. A uh, couple other announcements. One, continue to visit our website at www.gracemin.org. Check out our Facebook page and YouTube videos. We can, are continuing to add content there. And uh, it's a good place to find out what's going on. Speaking about what's going on, we're not 100% sure what is going to happen next week. We're waiting on some things, including some guidelines from the governor this coming week on hopefully on monday so we will as soon as we make a decision about whether we're going to be having church in person uh, we will be communicating that via the website and probably through some other methods as well when when we do go back things will be prepared for things to be a little bit different we'll be asking people to spread out a little bit uh, but it'll be good whenever we do get back. Uh, whatever restrictions we have to follow and uh, simple guidelines we do, it'll be good to be back together. Once again, thank you for worshiping with us at Grace Lutheran Church. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. continue in the last week of our sermon series 2020 focusing on vision we confess our sins and we look first at ourselves and recognize our failings confess those and then we look to Christ to receive his forgiveness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen beloved in the Lord let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, 
and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God, our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added to that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is also from Peter. Uh, Acts was talking, Peter talking, now we get Peter writing a letter. 1 Peter, chapter 1. If you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, Conduct yourselves with fear throughout your, the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincerely, sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this is the word, is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was just outside with uh, my children the other day, and one of my children, Elisha, was asking about why the flowers were dying. And I talked about, I said, well, the flowers are real pretty for a while, but they don't last very long. And um, that's what this verse is talking about, that uh, this life is just a, a short span. But as Peter said twice, um, we have been bought, we are... Uh, we have been bought with imperishable things. This world in its present form is passing away. Um, Peter earlier said that this is save yourselves from this, this crooked generation, this twisted generation. And, and he reminds us in the epistle lesson that we are imperishable because Christ has been risen from the dead. And so uh, our time here on earth 
is short and sometimes is, it's wonderful and sometimes it's terrible, uh, but the good news of the gospel is that we have an imperishable life through Christ our Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus also told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone when he is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. The evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my word and does them, I, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against the house and could not shake it because it had been built well. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built his house on the ground without a foundation. When the steam stream broke against it, Immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We continue by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our sermon hymn, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today's topic is I discipline. Uh, our 2020 vision sermon series is ending with a, a practical approach on what to do with our eyes. They say the eyes are the window to the soul. Jesus says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. It looks like Jesus is saying something more like, the eyes are the window through which your soul sees. So, watch what you watch. This is uh, my apartment college roommate, Dan, affectionately referred to by his roommates as Lieutenant Dan, and he, and he looks like a decent guy, right, and mostly is, a man who loves his, his wife and girls, uh, looks like an upstanding citizen, but that smile wouldn't tell you his killer instinct when it comes to competition, whether it was sports or video games or f apartment feats of strength, he turned into a fierce competitor. If you took your eye off him for even a minute in a game like Mario Kart, uh, he'd take you out even when you thought you had him beat soundly. Well, that's, that's kind of a silly example, admittedly, but it's always wise to keep an eye on your six, to be looking at and aware of your surroundings. If you watched any coverage leading up to the NFL draft, you might have heard the phrase, I discipline. I discipline means simply being in control of where you're looking. So if something's going on over here, you stay focused on what you need to stay focused on. And when you're playing organized football, you, you can't just watch the game like a spectator. You have to pay attention to specific things, looking for specific clues telling you uh, what your opponent's going to do. Uh, now those clues will vary depending on what position you play. The new Cincinnati quarterback Joe Burrow needs to understand the coverages that are, he's facing against and not stare down the receiver he wants to throw to. Um, but look his defenders off. A defender, similarly, can't be distracted by the flurry of motion around him, but watches for specific clues. For instance, an offensive lineman's first step uh, or move that might tell him a lot about the play. Well, Christian eye discipline is what we're talking about today, and um, it's similar to that sort of discipline. It's looking where you need to be looking and not being distracted by the flurry of motion that's going on around you. And when it comes to practicing Christian eye discipline, as I've dubbed it, it's, it's more than just learning the answer. It's more about preparing ourselves mentally to look where we should be looking, when we should be looking there. It takes not just brains, but grit. Um, I like this definition of grit, the ability to persevere towards long-term goals despite obstacles. Like most of Christian discipleship, and again, it's, it's, it's not just learning something, it's eye discipline requires grit. It takes grit to stay focused on Jesus, particularly when all kinds of things in the world are happening around us. Um, I discipline, as I hope you've gathered so far, is as much commitment as it is technique. It'd be easier right now just to laze our days away when we have time, or uh, gluing our eyes to our screens, or numbing our pain with entertainment. Uh, it's easy to take our eyes off of Jesus or to brush aside his instructions. That's why it's helpful to do simple, practical things like scheduling things you want to do. By the way, kudos for tuning in today. Um, or by planning to put down technology for certain periods. Uh, it, it might mean l limiting your checking of COVID-19 updates or just spending long periods of time scrolling through social media. It's certainly smart to be updated, but personally, I found myself spending sometimes an inordinate amount of time checking 
uh, up on the latest updates when there's really not all that much new news usually. Um, and when it comes to social media, if, if you're not being nasty, social media can, communicating in particular, communicating through social media is a great thing to be doing right now. However, at a certain point, just scrolling through Facebook or whatever uh, can become unhealthy for our psyche. Undisciplined online use in general can turn our eyes red and our souls dark. And that, all those things are probably particularly tempting now with more time at home. It, it might help to think of it this way. Peter said in our epistle, or in, in the Acts reading, uh, he encouraged people to turn away from the wicked and crooked generation that they were part of. And it might help us to think about things this way. We can be infected by worry, bitterness, and despair. It's infectious if we spend too, a prolonged time too close to it. And that's why I'm advocating a little, what I'm calling society distancing. Now, pay attention because I'm maybe not saying what you think I'm saying. Now, it only makes a little diff. Uh, it only makes sense for us to keep a little difference between ourselves and popular culture. N no matter whether we're talking about like the Roma Roman culture, or Babylonian culture, or the 60s, or the 90s, or the 2020s, every culture in the history of humankind has its deficiencies. That's why John says, "Do not love the world or the things of this world." If anyone loves the world, or you might say is infatuated with the world, the love of the Father is not with him. He continues in 1 John, For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. And that's a key point in our eye discipline here, is that the world around us is perishable, but God wants us to keep our eyes focused on what is imperishable and on his everlasting plans, not only our own, and the everlasting impact that we can have in this world. Our focus is not in making it in this life, but on the eternal kingdom of Christ. Uh, the Christian goal is not to distance ourselves from people. I'm not saying we should avoid people. I mean, right now we should, but in general, the idea is not just to avoid people, but from the values and from the control of this world and society as a whole. Now, again, Christ loved and cared for this world, and that is one of our most important goals that, and commands that Jesus gives us. I'm not trying to, and, and I'm also not trying to justify a lot of belly aching. Uh, there's a difference between speaking the truth and love and, and just plain old whining, right? If we want to actually change the world, if we notice that there's something wrong with it, what really changes it are love and sacrifice. That what, that's what causes people uh, to pay attention. Constructive criticism is certainly sometimes appropriate, including sometimes criticizing our culture, but it's really love and it's compassion that actually transform hearts and minds. Um, and when I propose society distancing, I'm not saying we need to, what I'm saying is we need to distinguish ourselves from the culture around us and, and not be unconscious consumers or super spreaders of the unhealthy parts of what the world around us assumes is normal. We need to be able to stand apart and stand out a little bit. In order to do that, a, a really key concept is the second part of our gospel lesson. Jesus said, first take the log out of your own eye before pointing out others' faults. What's your TV turned into? What websites do you visit? Your own eyes are your most important sphere of influence. Uh, as I was truly, as I was literally typing these words in my sermon, a song came on um, from a, a rock band called Shine Down, called Cut the Cord, and it, it says, it, it, for one more hit or one last score, don't be a casualty, cut the cord. It talks, well, actually it sort of chants and rocks and maybe even shouts a little bit about how it's 
it's better to cut yourself off, uh, particularly when you're dealing with something you enjoy but that isn't good for you. Sometimes you just got to cut the cord. You've got to make yourself uh, ready, get, your, get yourself amped up, brace yourself, and cut it off. Not waiting until you feel like it, because odds are you'll never feel like it. And, and that ties into to eye discipline and Christian discipline in general, because uh, sometimes we have, to, uh, we, do, we have to do things or stop things or start looking at things that we wouldn't naturally do. We've got to amp ourselves up, you might say, and prepare ourselves that it's, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. Uh, that's why it's called eye discipline. And now I'm, I'm not trying to suggest uh, that it's always as simple as simply stopping something at the drop of a hat or starting something. But, but what this song is doing is trying to get us uh, amped up about fighting our instincts or our ingrained habits. Because in practically all areas of Christian discipline, it requires us to wrestle with ourselves. So uh, you, you need to wrestle with your eyes a little bit, and that will take some determination. Uh, to say it another way, it's easier said than done to practice eye discipline. It's, it's very easy and natural for us to watch the world around us mindlessly, but God calls us to watch mindfully like a, a professional looking for specific things, we need to be on the lookout for temptations, for instance, so that we can avoid them. We need to be on the lookout for suffering, uh, not, uh, because, uh, not because we enjoy suffering, but because our Christian compassion and conviction drives us to do something about it, instead of just letting things happen without fighting back against injustice. We need to be training our eyes and on the lookout for Jesus and for opportunities to carry out the task that he has given us because there will be plenty of opportunities for us to do good. Not only now, but even as things open up, there's lots of opportunities. We could choose only to focus on ourselves or we could be on the lookout to see what God has called us to do in the world around us. And another aspect of that, there's, um, you know, there's always, there's ways we can do something positive uh, right now, which, for instance, simply calling up friends, uh, both for our benefit and for their own. We have more time now to read the scriptures or, or listen to maybe, maybe listen to some Christian radio or Christian podcast, or this is maybe a bit out there for most, but maybe do some memorization of some scripture verses. I, I think if you do any of those things, they might be harder to do than not, but I doubt you'll regret doing them when you actually do them. First and foremost, we want to keep our eyes trained on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. In sports, you probably still remember what those are. Uh, in sports, you've got to listen to the coach or the leaders on the field so that the team can work together well. Well, that's one reason we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, because he has goals and tasks for us. And when we listen to Jesus, he reminds us, first of all, that he's there, of his presence and his promises, um, and that he's going to get us through this. Uh, but he also reminds us that there are jobs that despite everything that's going on, we still have important jobs to do. Uh, he reminds us that what we need to be focused on is what we can have a positive impact on, no matter what's going around us, being good mothers or fathers, sisters or brothers, friends or neighbors or, or workers. Um, we all have simple, maybe not super exciting, but important daily tasks and relationships that we can invest in, that need us probably now more than ever. And we can see this as an opportunity to invest in those things. Secondly, uh, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus because of our own shortcomings. As Jesus said in the Gospel lesson, we can't very well help others out with a speck in their eye if we don't address the log in our own eye. Did that not turn out the way I wanted it to? Oh well. Uh, it's, uh, it's oh yeah, yeah, I guess you can sort of see Elisha behind that log. I thought it was funny, um, but maybe that's just because it's my kid. Um, <laughs> 
But uh, as a Christians, we need to keep a daily log. And by that, I don't mean writing things down, but we need to keep removing that log daily out of our eye. Uh, before we can make any impact on the world around us, as Jesus says, we've got to come before him and, and confess and ask for the Lord's help to take the problems out of our own eyes and lives. Um, now, I recognize that, uh, like a lot of preaching, I'm not really probably presenting a whole lot of new information to you. But again, that's uh, the thing about discipline. The first step, and it's an important one, is knowing what to do. But the second and more difficult step is being disciplined and carrying out these tasks, the execution of these things. And for that, we need commitment. For that, we need community, Christian community. And while we may not be able to uh, it probably makes it even more imperative that since we don't have, we can't gather together in the same exact way that we need to reach out to one another in other ways because we need each other's support and encouragement to, to live the life that God has called us to. We need leaders to lead us and guide us and uh, hold us accountable and encourage us and thankfully we have such a leader. We have our Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who speaks to us through his word and with the help of the Holy Spirit, um, not only does he teach us and guide us, but he forgives us. He cares for us, and he teaches us both to focus on what we need to do, but also on his grace and his promises for us. So, one last reminder, don't get too distracted by all the noise and problems around you. Focus on the, the tasks and the relationships that God has given you to do. And keep your eyes on Jesus, because he will help lead and guide you as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Continue with the offer of joy. He hears us and helps us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us in this difficult time in a variety of ways, and especially today, we pray that you would help us this week to watch what we're watching, to focus on the things that you would have us focus on. Lord, it's easy to get distracted, but we pray that you would help us do the most important tasks, sometimes the, the simplest and, and the tasks that um, we overlook. Help us to be good friends and, and uh, good children and and siblings and parents. Um, help us to be uh, good fellow church members. We pray, Lord, that and take care of our, the daily things that need to happen, even if they seem mundane. Lord, they are important and essential, and we pray that you would help us to, uh, to give us extra energy and courage and strength to do these, these tasks. Um, you know what all those are, Lord, and we pray that you reveal them to us uh, and, and strengthen us to do them. We pray that you be with each one of us in the different challenges that we face um, and that you would give us the strength that we need uh, to face those daily challenges. We ask that you would help us to daily take the log out of our own eye before we attempt to take the speck out of someone else's eye. Um, we thank you for your uh, many promises and your protection. We pray that you watch over us in body, mind, and spirit. Be with all our world, be with all our leaders making difficult decisions uh, from presidents to governors to uh, leaders of other nations as well. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would watch over us and give wisdom to these, those making decisions and help us to, uh, to uh, we pray, Lord, that if it be your will, you'd have mercy and, and uh, help us to, uh, to do what we ought to do and help all those who are fighting the, the coronavirus and looking for solutions, and we just pray that you would uh, have mercy upon us in our world. Um, be with all those who are hurt or suffering or struggling 
especially those who have been affected by COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones, um, uh, particularly hard hit places, all those working on the front lines and healthcare workers and first responders, we thank you and pray that you would strengthen them and keep them safe and uh, not only in body but also in mind and spirit and what must sometimes be a grueling toll that it takes upon them. We pray that we thank you for these people and pray that you watch over them. Um, be especially with those whom we name, mention now specifically, we pray uh, for uh, Belinda Oberding, who uh, the beginning stages of, of Alzheimer's. Uh, we pray and we thank you for Rachel Hopkins and pray that you watch over her and guide her, a nurse who is volunteering to travel to California to help out with the COVID-19 crisis. We thank you for her and all others like her. Um, and we pray that you, you would help them to make a positive impact and, and help those who are hurting. Be also with uh, Esther Goldfiss, uh, Billy Beinkamper, Elaine Cheesebrew, Dave and Linda Isley, Becky Cannonberg, Linda McCabe, Terry McCabe, Nancy Niehaus, Donna Nimmo, Lester Rampage, Ken Ross, Hugh Schaefer, Rita Sohn, Becky Stamper, David Stamper, Ruth Thomas, and Clyde Wallenweber. Heavenly Father, you know these, need, these and their needs. We pray that you would especially be with them. Be with all those who can't see barely anyone um, in... Uh, uh, in different uh, nursing home facilities and independent living, and um, we pray that you would sustain them, especially in this uh, difficult time. Be with these and all others whom we name silently in our hearts now as well. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd especially be with those who are less fortunate, who are who uh, have been hit harder and they're not just inconvenienced but whose lives are truly taking a much more difficult turn and uh, or in, in danger because of all that's going on. We pray that you would watch over them and uh, that you would again uh, sustain and strengthen and help us uh, to, to see meaningful and wise ways in which we can uh, positively impact and, and be of a, a aid since you have uh, blessed all of us uh, that you would help us to be a blessing to the world around us. These and all other prayers we bring before you, Heavenly Father, knowing that you hear them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through salutary gifts, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through these gifts in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We continue with some more Easter Alleluias in our hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. 